three knowledgeable voices on crisis we are facing right now. I'm here with Vivian Ogukorbi. She's a researcher and positive peace activist. Alexandra Przoszowski, journalist. And Joshua Polkar, who's a strategic foresight expert. Vivian, I'd like to start with you. You said it needs the experience of the old, but also this energy of the young people. But what about the special experience from your generation uh, when it comes to crises like the pandemic or, for example, the climate change? So, well, I really believe that like uh, what our generation can bring in is different perspective. Uh, we see the same problematic, but with different lens. Thus, uh, we can arrive to different solutions or different understandings on what's going on. And if we can mix that different perspective, our perspective and the perspective of the more experienced people, what we can come out is with uh, better solutions. I think that like young people has act um, very well during the pandemic, of course, with difficulties, but we have um, created our virtual world. We started uh, connecting with people from across the world. We help um, other persons also with climate crisis. We are not only demonstrating, striking, but we are also um, making tangible solutions uh, that can make a, a change. So yeah, I think that if we are able to, to work together in equality, we'll be able to solve uh, much more crisis. Okay, thank you so much, Vivian. Josh, EU High Representative Joseph Borrell spoke about the future narrative. So as a strategic foresight expert, what can you say about that? Yeah, absolutely. Narrative is super important to the way we humans conceive of the future. Even if we're projecting from the past using data, we're still creating or superimposing some kind of narrative on what we're saying about what the future can, should, might, ought to be. So it's really important that we as organizations grasp the importance of, uh, of developing future narratives because without that we're kind of lost and people living through crises are more likely to revert back to wanting to save the past, wanting to hold on to what used to be. Using imagination to create positive narratives of the future is really what we're all about. And if we can seize that opportunity, then we can bring people on our journey and develop greater legitimacy for the solutions that we're proposing. Very interesting. Thank you very much. Alexandra, I come to you. Um, what is the most important lesson media had to learn in the pandemic, but also now at the moment uh, in the war that Russia fights against the Ukraine? I think maybe I start with the audience because the most important thing was to find out that facts actually matter. And it really matters how they're conveyed through the media, through policymakers and through everybody else that stands in the public eye. So I think what we as a media really learned to start, you know, developing over, over the crisis of the past five years is how to debunk fake news, how to, you know, use all the tools available to, to really go to the matter of the truth and actually have the factual reporting that, that really ha helps to, um, you know, inform decision making and, and you know, public opinion to, to, to make up their minds on issues. And when we think of COVID, I mean, obviously, I think we learned that information saves lives. So it was very important to, to fact check, to really try to be as accurate as possible. And when it comes to Ukraine and, and Russia, I think it is one of the conflicts that is probably the most well documented one that we ever have seen. The amount of information and evidence of war crimes and so on available is so big that it needs to be fact check and, and, and do everything to, to debunk the fake news and make it matter in the way that it informs how we are judging the crisis and what policymakers can respond to, to, to them. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> no, it was totally fine. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you guys. All news about the future is fake. <laughs>